question I have for you. I've never heard this address before. And does anyone in the world not call you Constantine? Like, does anyone call you Costine? Or like, do you have like a nickname that people call you? Dude, that's a great question. Okay, so I'm, I'm from the city originally, I'm from Brooklyn, you know, pretty big Greek community there when I was a kid. Yeah. Then I moved to like the, you know, real suburban North Jersey, um, you know, country land of uh, Bergen County, New Jersey, Upper Bergen County, very yeah. super white bread, affluent area. And, you know, Constantine was just a lot for them to handle as a kid. Uh, they were like, what is this? I don't, you know, it's really not that hard a name, but it was intense for them. So Dean actually growing up, Gostandinos is my name. So Dean was short. So anyone from like North Jersey that I grew up with is, and if I hear someone go, Dean, you know, it's like, how, what? So, but I developed nicknames all along the way, you know, um, yeah. Dino, Tino, Bino, D, C, Con, Const. My <laughs> sister and brother call me Const. All of Broadway calls me Connie, Connie, Connie. That's my mother's nickname because she's Constance. So I've had a lot of nicknames. Yeah, my, my, my cousin was Gus. So he, and he was a Constantine. So I never was a Gus. But I use Gus because it's easy for like Starbucks to just be like Gus, <laughs> G-U-S, Gus. They're like, they still fuck it up. But um, they're like, I thought you said uh, just. Well, it's, it's similar. Uh, I, my guess was going to be it was going to be Gus or Costas. And that, that yeah. is based on the two places in the world where you can get great Greek food, in my opinion, are Long Island and New Jersey and the two places where you go to the diner and the placemat has the upcoming Greek Orthodox carnival uh, advertising coming up. So I'm really love that. told me that. Well, uh, Gostas is really Gus. So like even C-O-S-T-A-S is really G-U-S. I know it sounds crazy because the C is really like a G sound like, so it's like, so Gus, when you hear Gus, Gus is, is a, is a Gostas. It's not, he's not like an Augustus. So yeah. Costas is like the sort of Americanized way to say it. Yeah, like Bob Costas or something, <laughs> but it's really, really Costas. Well, I asked, yeah. I'll ask you a little bit more about that. Don't worry, I asked these same questions to Tommy Lee when I interviewed him, but your new movie <laughs> is Dark State. Uh, when did you actually film it? Because you can't exactly look at it and go, man, that is so 2018 or anything like that. No, we shot it. Um, well, I guess it was fall 19, mm -hmm. fall 19, and then the pandemic happened Yeah. shortly after. So obviously some delays along the way with things, but, um, the fact that really, a, you know, not very long after, um, although it's been a long year, um, it's here. It's having a theatrical release. Right. Sorry, a couple of little snacks there. No, um, you don't say sorry. I say sorry. <laughs> you don't say sorry. So happy. Um, wonderful female director, writer, female lead. Mm -hmm. With everything, ha you know, just wonderfully empowering to see that. Um, love supporting independent film. Love playing edgy, cool, dangerous roles like this. I seem to get those calls. <laughs> I'm really a nice guy, but you know, I don't know the long, the long Greek name, you know, whatnot. Um, yeah. And uh, I just, um, I just enjoy being a part of sort of passion projects like this. Mm -hmm. Growing up in New Jersey, knowing what that sort of backdrop of South Jersey, the Pine Barrens, the sort of like weird stories and spooky things that have happened there, you know, kind of Blair Witch type tales, even though that, sure. I think that was that. Maryland or something. Um, but that might as well have been New Jersey, that, 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 uh, that film as well. So there's so many weird New Jersey things like that. It's a, um, 
Yeah, there's even an indie magazine out there called Weird New Jersey where they have like, oh, yeah. all kinds of yeah weird stuff like that. So yeah. Hamilton, definitely a great backdrop for that. And uh, look, man, I was just, you know, they had me in mind. It worked out. Um, she made this movie in 13 days. It's pretty insane. You actually answered my next two or three questions, which were it's because of long. coffee. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like you've been doing this a little bit. Uh, Maybe. I was going to ask, how long did you actually spend filming it? Where did you spend uh, most of that time filming it? And who is the great director? And was it a pleasure working with them? But you're professional like that. And you just well, mentioned Weird New Jersey, which Chris Gethard got his start, in my opinion, writing for that. Uh, oh. you, you seem like one of those people, based on your awesome career choices, and I'm calling them awesome career choices, that... You did mainstream stuff, but you knew all the alternative stuff that was going on and you just kind of had to be quiet about that. Would you agree <laughs> with that? For example, Rock of Ages, I love Rock of Ages, but you seem like you know every song on Invasion of Your Privacy by Rat. Yeah, no, for sure. I love all those kinds of uh, metal bands as well. And uh, um, man, I, I just grew up with such a diverse palette and taste you know i have an older brother who's sort of like the king of indie everything you know yeah. he's like an icon iconic fixture in uh, the goth and industrial scene eighth and marulis yes. so i i really just wanted to be just like him when i was a kid you know he's 11 years older than me and so he was really well out of the house as i was coming up and i just idolized him and my sister as well i was, was a school principal and you know went to columbia and all of this but she did shows as a kid and just you know my parents um you know worked a lot but there would be nat king cole and sinatra in the house we would watch movie musicals you know and then you know my brother got me into like cool independent films and punk rock but also david bowie but also would bring me home like classic rock albums my sister was into you know new wave um in the 80s and then i'm a i'm a mtv kid you know mm -hmm. 80s i grew up with a joystick in my hand but i'm also <laughs> like in my 40s so it's like pre-internet post i'm just like the definition of gen x you know and uh so for me, it's just like always been like a briefcase and a microphone, you know, like you are your best, I don't know, manager and agent and, you know, put yourself in cool positions to be successful. Sure. Great opportunities um, to be, you know, out there in the public eye are awesome, but train and, I've, you know, I have a background in theater and acting from Boston Conservatory and mm -hmm. yes, I, I I had a sense that Rock of Ages would be a great project, and uh, we actually we were filming a big concert special we just announced yesterday. Um, actually, it's going to be live in late April. You can you know find it anywhere. A simple Google search. It's going to be incredible. A big all star reunion, uh, and uh, it's going to be awesome. I just filmed this Who uh, the Who in concert celebrating the fiftieth year of. Um, who's next one of their yeah. greatest albums um so that'll be out as well this spring so you know you just got to do a little of everything and when tracy called um you know i just she, i just enjoyed her whole vibe so much um i hadn't met her until i got to the set you know we had a little chit chat before got suited up you know and then we just you know hit that shit because when you're making a movie like this, there's no time to just like mess around. And yeah, we got to shoot it in this beautiful, I think her family's, you know, vintage home, a Victorian home. Um, and, uh, you know, all the ornate sort of uh, interiors there kind of lent itself well. Uh, it was cold and nasty out and, uh, you know, drive. It's a long drive for me because I, I now live in New Jersey again, in North Jersey. I left the city after 20 years. Um, that long drive down there, like uh, the Pine Barrens for, it feels like hundreds of miles on either yeah. side of you. Um, just, uh, you know, got you psyched for sure to, to film an edgy thing like this. My wife has gotten me hip to the Jersey geography. So <laughs> I empathize, but at the same time, when you live in the city, you have that point where you realize the grass is a little bit greener in the suburbs and then you get to the suburbs and you go man I wish there was a show I wish there was a good restaurant so 
the back right. and forth. But a compliment to you is that something like Dark State is a very complex role for you. Uh, you're a naturally smiley kind of guy when you're in public. We know that from, say, Rock of Ages, from seeing you on TV and all that. Yet you can do something like Adler's Appetite, which is, you know, full on axle mode. So you're always versatile, in my opinion. Is it tough for you to get into character, into the dark mode? In other words, can like no one can talk to you for two hours and you have to do that? Or can you just turn it on and off? Yeah, I'm not I'm, I, uh, I can turn it on. I could turn it on. Um, it's just, you know, it's just. Uh... I don't know you're an actor you just kind of serve the the moment and serve the text and um usually that allows you to go right there you know yeah. certainly um you know the guns and roses material is just it's just there you know and you know even to just get you know just imagine living under the street yeah you know and it's just like it's all so forward and it's also just in that edge so then you're there and then um with a story like this for sure i mean you walk onto set and the lighting and the vibe and you know the scene and the moment before and the beautiful girl and it's just all kind of you're just there and you just you just you just turn on and do your job um i don't know it's weird man it just kind of happens that way you got i think for me i've always prided myself on being a chameleon and versatile and uh you know, maybe I've spread myself out too thin, you know, and maybe if I focus on like just doing one thing, but I'm just not interested in that, you know, so I like to do lots of different things. And, you know, the fact that this is getting a theatrical release is, mm -hmm. is, is really awesome and nice payoff. So I was told that you do have another album coming out in the near future, which I'm glad to hear. In general, I think it's a great career path that you have where you say, well, I can mix it up between theater, film, recording, touring, one-off projects, tributes and all that. And as you just alluded to, some people say you should just do this one thing and make it your <laughs> focus. But I get the vibe that what you're doing now is what you wanna be doing, picking and choosing what you do one project at a time. Absolutely, and, th and I'm, so, I'm so glad that you get that, Darren, and I appreciate that. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I've been through a lot. I, uh, you know, I went through some personal turmoil a few years ago with my, you know, my family and that dynamic, you know, not easy, you know, uh, being a, a young father and, uh, you know, being in a tumultuous situation at times, uh, but we've been the public eye on top of that. Yeah, yes, for sure. And it's just so hurtful and painful and there's just so much. And it was just, Oh God, so hurtful on many levels, you know, and uh, I think I needed to kind of take a little time out there and then you start kind of building it back by just, but yeah, but really I always had a pride in my work, um, but really putting the, you know, working with people that do believe in you and do believe you and um, getting a chance to get back in the studio and write again, mm -hmm. um, write songs again. I hadn't put out an original album in well over 10 years. Um, and uh you know, so much to say, you know, so much to write about. And, uh, and, you know, my daughter is just so beautiful and, and I'm so proud of her. She's gorgeous, but she's so kind and so bright, very talented, great at sports and, you know, just so well-rounded and adjusted. And for two crazy rock and roll parents, um, you know, she's turned out pretty good. And <laughs> thankfully I, I still have my, you know, nearly 86 year old, you know, mother around, uh, Greek mom to, uh, you know, and she's very involved with my daughter's life as well. Great influence on her. And, and certainly being home for the last year, you just sort of have, um, it's been nice to have her around, of course, um, my daughter in particular, because she's got a schedule and she's got to get through school each day. You know, we were homeschooling and then we were in, in, in school training and, you know, she's still doing travel soccer with guidelines and each day is just a schedule to get through. And before you know it, look, it's a year later and I, I lost one of my dearest friends in the world over this. Um, and I, I, there's not a day that goes by, I don't think about him. And, um, you know, we've been through so much, but, you know, I know that he and, and, and our whole community are, are, uh, are, are bigger than than this and we will get through this and we will get back to work and entertaining and i think a movie like this is is fun because it's sort of 
touches upon all these things that are happening and the, the, the creepiness of Hollywood and politics and, you know, but to see like, I man, right. I mean, it's just so yeah. weird, dark state, deep state, you know, you got like Colts, you got Q, I don't know, Trump, you know, whatever is happening yeah. out there in the ether, it seems to kind of be a little touch of it in, in this film all over it, but uh, it's good shit. Absolutely. That I can't agree more with that. And three quick questions, which are going to be much sure. easier for you. And then you're a free man. First one is, what is your favorite album by Van Halen? Because I know that you're both a 5150 guy and a Roth era guy. Oh, my gosh. It's so hard because... Oh, so it wasn't okay. an easy question. Okay. <laughs> well, it's so hard because... Okay. Remember the beginning of Van Halen, I was like a little, little kid. I mean, I was really young. Same here. So when I, like, I remember Hot for Teacher on MTV, but it had been like around for a while, like that video and the whole thing. And then really like David Lee Roth was more like just the gigolo was like in California girls. And, um, uh, but you know, you have, um, right now come out, Sammy yes. Hagar, you know, there was just something about that moment. I'm like a freshman in high school, you know, and I'm starting to come into my own as like a musician and like a singer. And I, I performed the song with um, with my band at the Battle of the Bands. And people were like, no way, you can't do that. That no one can pull that song off. And of course, we slayed it. Yes. And, uh, you know, it was just um, so, you know, I feel like, wow. Uh, I just I love it both. I mean, to be able to and it's funny, I'm a, still a big Howard Stern fan and he talks about it all the time. I mean, to be able to have success with both singers, it's totally impossible. So um, I think there is an, an incredible genius in the David Lee Roth stuff that that's 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 almost underappreciated because I know it's like girls and this and that. But like the complexity of, of the singing and like the harmonics he does with his voice, you know, but then Sammy Hagar is more of like a musician. Uh, so I don't know, man. I think, yeah, 5150. I mean, you know, all of it is just so good. And the guitar playing and the drums and the background singing, it's just all good shit. Man. I love it all. The correct answer was anything but Diver Down. But anyway, uh, next. <laughs> you know these albums. Like, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm not like a title guy. But titles uh, escape me, like people's names. I'm like, hi. And the best thing, I'll be like, I'll be with like, you know, my, per my person or something. And I'll be like, okay, always ask them their name because I'll probably have forgotten it. Yes. And I'll be like, oh, this is, and. So then she'll be like, oh, and you are? And then it'll be like, Mar Mark. So I could say it at the same time. Like, cause I just need a little refreshing. I'm just bad with names. Unless they're long and Greek, I just like, they're like all John. <laughs> they're all John and Jane to me. It's terrible. <laughs> totally get that. Next, But, but we put out, we did, we did an album. We didn't, we're not, it's not coming out. We, we did an album came out this year. Or actually um, over the summer. So it's been out there and it's been really doing well. All about you, the single um, has been getting played all over XM, which is cool. And um, you can find it on, you know, Apple, Apple Music, Spotify, and even on my website, ConstantineMaroulis.com, you can get hard copies of this flying saucer thing and just throw it <laughs> at people. I don't know if you can play it anywhere, but, but it's fun, man. It's good stuff. And we're already working on another one because I'm, I got into a nice groove, you know? Sure. It's on XM, just like Howard is. And uh, next question, hopefully- He's needs been playing some of my parodies. I, I did some parodies for him. He plays some parodies for me, yeah. I did not know that you, I, I always knew about Dan, this, Dan the parody man. I did not know that you were a parody guy for, for Stern. So I'm gonna scrap my next two questions and just ask him, how did that happen? Well, I built a friendship with um, Gary over the years and, um, I would see him at the Songwriters Hall of Fame and he was just like a fan and cool and we just connected. I had met Howard many, many moons ago when he first started going out with Beth at a um, North Shore Animal League event. Sure. Very, very low key event we were doing at FAO Schwartz at the time. <laughs> and I, I'm six foot, I'm six foot three. 
and he's a good 6'5". Yeah. I think he, he might even be taller than that. He calls himself 6'5", but he's a massive guy. Yeah. And we were just like, what's up, dogs, cool, you know, New York, you know, talking about our parents, like, just simple. Like, you grow up around here, you know, like, you can't start being like, oh, gushing on people like that because they just, it's just not. Totally. Not the vibe. So he never came to see Rock of Ages or anything like that. But then Gary and I were just friends and then – my brother's wife is a massive publicist um, of huge musicians. She's got Adam Levine and all these people. And so I don't even know. There was just like a kind of a vibe. And then I think we connected and I was like, if you ever need anything, you know, a voice. So they came to me with some like ideas about. Um, I think we did something like, come on, come on, feel the noise. But like, it was like, come on, wear your mask. Don't be a fucking dumbass, you know, and like stuff like that, you know. And then there was like another one, like about Robin. I I think oh. I know where that one is going. Yeah, uh, Robin, he, Robin, Robin was a uh, teacher. You know, yes. Yeah, no, it was like uh, Robin sniffing herself again or something like that. It was just nuts. Totally nuts. They're just crazy. I love them. I love them to death. Everyone. I I, I can't like I. I can't picture a world without Howard, so. I'm with you. Well, so many great things you're working on. Looking forward to everything that you're doing in the future, and I hope you just keep hitting them with the hind. That's it, man. Hit them with the hind! <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you and, so much, um, Joe. Thanks, dude. You're the man. I appreciate your support, and uh, check out the film March 19th in uh, theaters, hopefully near you. That Actually, our first two showings in New York, March 19th, are sold out. I mean... That's kind of crazy. And looking forward to your next gig in the New York, New Jersey area, whenever that is, man. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. Yeah. Keep it up. Thanks, Darren. Follow me on the socials and uh, keep keep posted. Done and done. Thanks again. All right, dude. Late. Outrocast.